You're moving along the instructional design continuum and you're feeling like you've got a good handle on the analysis phase of the design. You've identified your goals and you've analyzed the learners and the environment. You're ready to jump into the next phase of the instructional design process, the design phase. What's included in the design phase? Well, according to Dick and Carey's model, there's writing performance objectives and developing an instructional strategy as part of the design phase. These pieces are also part of the design phase of the more general ADDI model. In their model, Dick and Carey suggest that the development of assessment instruments, which are part of the development phase, should also be started during this time since you will need to understand how your objectives will be assessed as you write your instructional strategy. Let's take a look at the piece of the design phase known as writing performance objectives. Performance objectives used to be called behavioral objectives. In and around 1962, Roger Major played a key role in getting educators to look at clear and precise definitions of objectives and a conceptual base for writing objectives was established. Research as to whether or not performance objectives make a difference has been ambiguous, but what has been established is that performance objectives have become significant to the design of instruction. They help guide content selection. They guide the development of instructional strategy and the assessment process and they provide clear guides for learners and curriculum specialists. Think about the cognitive process that you're focusing on for a given objective. Where does your goal fit? Simply put, a performance objective is going to identify what students will be able to do when they complete the instruction. Let's take a look at performance objectives, break them down into their parts, and look at the process of writing them. We may hear the terms learning objective, instructional objective, and performance objective used interchangeably. Generally speaking, the designer uses these terms to describe the same thing, which we'll refer to today as performance objective. Taking a goal and making it clear and precise can be thought of as a conversion of sorts. When an instructional goal is converted to a performance objective, it is often referred to as a terminal objective. Objectives used along the way to a terminal objective are referred to as subordinate objectives. Okay, what are the parts of a performance objective? There are three parts, a condition, a behavior, and criteria. These three parts should be present in any well-written performance objective. Remember, a performance objective clearly defines what students will be able to do when they complete the instruction. During the analysis phase, you've identified the subordinate skills along the way to your goal. These are behaviors. Now your task in the design phase is to add a condition and an assessment to the behavior. When looking at behaviors, you need to ask yourself this. Can I observe the learner doing this? If the answer is yes, which is often easy for psychomotor skills, then you're going to provide conditions and criteria for the behavior. Conditions are the exact set of circumstances and resources available to the learner. When defining conditions, the designer needs to consider the behavior being demonstrated and the characteristics of the target population. Will a cue be provided to the latter, such as, given the term, right? What resources will be required to perform the task? 
Will there be charts, reports, reference materials provided to the learner? The designer also needs to consider the scope and complexity of the task and how relevant the information will be. These are the things that make up the condition of the performance objective. The criteria for the performance objective is identifying what is acceptable behavior. This can be a complex problem for attitudinal goals and may require judgment on the part of the instructor or other expert. The process for writing objectives includes reviewing the goal, writing the objective, considering the assessment for later, and considering entry skills. First, the designer should review the goal and ensure that it has a description of the ultimate concept. If it doesn't, the goal should be rewritten. Next, the designer should write a terminal objective for each unit of instruction. The designer should ensure that each terminal objective includes each of the three parts, a condition, a behavior, and a criteria. This process should include writing objectives for subordinate skills. As these objectives are written, consider that there will be an assessment instrument written for each one of them later. Also, the designer is going to need to consider entry skills and determine if all the learners will have these skills and whether or not they will need to be tested for them. After writing the performance objectives, you are going to want to evaluate them. How does one go about doing that? One simple way is to try and write a test item for the objective. If it is difficult to write a test item, then go back and rewrite the objective. Also, look at the criteria and determine if it will be observable with the specified condition. This may be easy to do with verbal and intellectual skills, but not as easy with psychomotor or attitude skills. Check the objective for clarity and feasibility and don't be afraid to use two to three sentences to write the objective clearly. One additional note when evaluating objectives includes making sure the objective doesn't specify how a behavior is learned. The how is not part of the performance objective. The performance objective is what students will be able to do when they complete the instruction. There's a little bit about performance objectives and their role during the design phase of the instructional design process. Remember, performance objectives may or may not make a difference, but they are critical to the design of the instruction. As they say, practice makes perfect, and writing good performance objectives takes some practice. The better you get at writing performance objectives, the better your design of instruction is going to be.